Each summer, hundreds of kids enjoy summer camps of different kinds. First Local's Gwen Hunter got a chance to drop by an outdoor adventure camp. We're here at the Day Camp Adventure Camp Luna Project in St. George. David Masters started Lunatic Adventures in 2002. He had worked in a high pressure job in Toronto as a food broker. He returned home to help his mother care for his ill father and at that time rekindled his love for their land. It's been a long process to get here. I did do the job that I was told that when you grow up you have to get married, buy a house, buy a car, save, have that corporate lifestyle and that's what I thought I was supposed to do. <laughs> Pardon me. Uh, and I did that for about 10 years and realized that I was extremely unhappy doing that. Um, and it wasn't until 2005, two, sorry, 2002 when my father was diagnosed with cancer when I realized I need to try something a little bit different in life. Um, so I followed my passion and started a canoe tripping company. And now we're here today with the, the Luna Project and, and we're, we're running summer camps and kids programs. Each year, over 2,000 people come through the property to see the yurt that Masters lives in and to experience the trails on the property. This week, children from the ages of 9 to 12 are attending a day camp. Uh, we run two, two to three weeks every year, uh, and then we run a, a Tomogamy canoe tripping camp as well for students 12 to 14, um, uh, 14 to 16, and they're anywhere from seven, 14, and 21 day expeditions. Uh, and what we're trying to do is, is it's not about canoe tripping, it's not about you know, solar panels and wind turbines and playing in the forest. It's about trying to find connections with that child to the environment. Um, I'm finding a lot of kids are really disconnected. I know when I was a kid I was. Uh, and as time went on, we start to remove ourselves farther and farther from the environment. Um, so if we can find like a, a link, whether it's teaching a child about stinging nettle and explaining that there are uh, other plants in the forest that can help you, there's medicine around you, and there is you know, it, they're not directly removed from the environment, they are indeed part of the environment. Uh, and I think that's our biggest message, is trying to find a way, not just for children, but for adults to connect to the environment as well. So now we're doing corporate team building here. We have an archery range, campsites, mountain bike course, uh, four kilometers of multi-use trails. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's about getting people out into the outdoors. Yeah, we're building a shelter. And our idea of the shelter is that we're gonna put, we put sticks down, then we're putting bark on it, on top of it, so it won't get as much rain in. The best part of this camp is you get like to go outside and enjoy what's really outside. You, because at home you can't really do stuff. You can't really see what's part of nature. The Luna Project is a growing business, but the original plan for the company wasn't about making a profit. It was about helping children make connections with nature. It was never the idea. Uh, okay. The idea was just to come back here to help my mom care for my dad because okay. uh, he was really sick. Uh, after he passed away, that's when I built the second yurt, and the idea was if mom was to stay on the farm, then I'd help actually um, generate some sort of an income. I didn't want to lose this property, and I knew with the talk of the, the um, 424 going through, that was a big concern for my father. Uh, everything on the property here has been built portable, so there's nothing permanent on the property. But the more that I was here, the, the more the children would come out, the more the adults would come out, it, it really spoke to me and said, you know what, there is something here that people need to experience. And it's, it's the land, it's not just us as staff, the, the kids are connecting to the land. And the, you know, with the 120 year old trees, we have a, a 300 year old tree here and the kids are just in awe with such things. And it's, it's a free space for them to go kind of explore and do and just have fun. And I think children really need that. Particularly even in Brantford, there's a lot of children who have never had the opportunity to have a bonfire and roast a s'more. And then they come out here and and we're making those connections with them and they're just, they're in their glory. And kids need to play. Well, I learned that you're gonna have to be really, really confident over a couple of days because, or else if you're not confident, you're not gonna think that you're gonna be building all of this. And if you don't, if you're not confident, you don't believe. So I really like it out here. Um, this week I learned that there is a plant called jewelweed and it usually goes right beside stinging nettle. Do not get into it unless you see jewelweed. Jewelweed, you just, jewelweed, you just pick it and rub it all over your stinging nettle and it goes away eventually. And, um, 
Yeah, there's also this kind of bark that I learned last year. If you, like, it's a rotting log, and then, you know that squishy stuff? There's a kind of squishy stuff in it, and if you squeeze it hard enough, water will come out, and you can drink it if you're lost and you can't find water. The development of the Luna Project is almost at a tipping point for Masters. It's a growing business, but he wants to maintain the focus on being on the land and working to educate others around him on the value of nature. No, I'll never be stuck on the 403 again unless I'm going back up to Tomogamy. But, uh, I, you know, and that's, that, that is a good question because I'm fearful right now. I've, I'm at a teetering point where, yes, I could end up right back in that corporate entity by this business could just continue on the path that it's going. And next thing you know, I'm sitting in the office five days a week. Um, I want the company to continue to grow, but I think the important thing is I'm trying to get that message of sustainability and choice out to as many people as I can. So I'm trying to uh, develop uh, the, the lecturing um, that we're doing, and if I stay in the yurt, then I stay in the yurt, but I was only supposed to be here for a year. Uh, it's been five and a half years now, so I can't see me going anywhere. I know Luna will be here for a very, very long time. Um, to, what, to what development, I'm not sure. I'm just a guy that wants to take care of my home. For more information on the Luna Project, visit them online at thelunaproject.ca. I'm Gwen Hunter, reporting for First Local. We're going to take a short break here on First Local. We'll be right back. Don't go away.